Monster Hunter World's weapon progression paths are much simpler than previous games, but there are some standout paths you may or may not notice. This guide series is going to focus on weapon upgrades to take you through low rank and high rank as painlessly as possible for each weapon type. Obviously, since we're talking about flying through the early game, we don't want to sit and farm monsters for days. You will need to farm a bit following these paths, but hopefully not too much. The majority of the parts also come from easier monsters, which should make progress fairly painless. You need to hoard everything you come across. If you see a mining node, hit it. Bone pile, take everything. The last thing you want to do is have to go randomly find some bones or minerals for an upgrade. Everything you gather will be useful, and you'll save time by gathering as much as you can along the way. Any questionable materials, I will be providing where to get them as we talk about the upgrades themselves. Switch Axe has a special property known as files. We want power files. They're just better than the alternatives like exhaust, poison, paralysis, and power element. This means we're looking for high damage and sharpness, elemental damage if we can get it, and a power file. The upgrade path is pretty clean for Switch Axe, but it's kind of boring. The short answer for this guide is... Make the bone path through low rank, then pick up the Toby Kadachi path and follow it or optionally upgrade it to the Uragan path before picking up Nergigante's switch axe and that should take you through to endgame. Now for the long answer. The proto iron axe one you start with is good for the first few missions. The bone path will be our preference but in these early stages they're very similar. Proto iron axe 2 gets green sharpness but the bone axe 2 has 35 more raw damage. Both have the power file that we want. Green sharpness isn't important just yet, so the focus should be on the bone path. However, you can build the ore path if you prefer having more green sharpness at this early stage of the game, as it will be used for an upgrade later on. The best part about the bone and ore paths is you won't need specific monster parts, and you'll instead need to gather bones or ores. These are found around the map, and appear as fairly consistent rewards from every single monster. Make a bone axe 1, and upgrade it to a bone axe 2 by using 3 monster bone S. Unfortunately, this will have to tide you over until you've hunted the Pookie Pookie. You should get Monster Bone M from the hunt. Use two Monster Bone M and one Ancient Bone to upgrade your Bone Axe 2 into a Bone Axe 3. Now do your mandatory hunts of a Broth and a Juratotus in Wildspire Wastes. You can optionally make a Madness Axe 1 from Juratotus or a Carapace Axe 1 from Broth, but we lose the very desirable Power File for less desirable Power Element or Paralysis. The Carapace Axe would be the preference here as it has 35 higher raw damage but loses power file and it's minus 20% affinity which enables feeble hits. This does bridge into the Diablo Switch Axe later which is one of the strongest in the game but starts off quite weak. So stick with the Bone Axe 3 for now. Keep progressing and hunt Toby Kadachi. Hang on to the materials, we won't be able to build the Switch Axe now but we will later. Then hunt Anjanath. Once you beat Anjanath, you'll be able to upgrade from the Bone Axe 3 to the Bone Smasher 1 by using 1 Monster Bone L, 5 Monster Bone M, and 2 Boulder Bone. Monster Bone L are rewards from monsters like Anjanath, Rathian, and Zitsuyaku. The Boulder Bones can be scavenged from bone piles in the Wildspire Wastes. After defeating Zora Magdaros, don't worry, it's a set piece and you can't really lose, you'll gain access to the Coral Highlands. In the Coral Highlands, you're forced into an expedition to explore. Here you can mine to get Dragonite Ore. Mine 5 as soon as possible. Also try and get 3 Coral Crystal while you're here, they'll be used later. Upgrade your original Proto Iron Axe 1 into a Proto Iron Axe 2 by using 2 Iron Ore. Then upgrade that into a Proto Iron Axe 3 by using 2 Earth Crystals, 2 Macolite Ore, and 5 Iron Ore. Then upgrade that into a Thunder Axe 1 by using 5 Dragonite Ore, 1 Toby Kadachi Electrode, 2 Toby Kadachi Claw, and 1 Electro Sack. This upgrade is not immediately better than the Bone Smasher 1, but will be useful once we hit late low and high rank. You can use it if you want, but the Bone Smasher has higher damage. Continue through the main story, take out Paolumu, then you'll descend into the Rotten Vale, and you can take out Rataban. Then we'll have to take on Legiana. Hopefully you'll get 2 Monster Bone Plus from the hunt. You have a choice to make here. You can use your 2 Monster Bone Plus to upgrade your Bone Smasher 1 into a Bone Smasher 2, or you can use them to upgrade your Thunder Axe 1 into a Thunder Axe 2. The Bone Smasher 2 has higher raw damage, but this is the last useful upgrade of the Bone Path as once we hit high rank, the damage equalizes, and the file changes from the awesome Power File to the less useful Dragon File. By going down the Thunder Axe path, you'll lose 35 raw damage and gain 90 thunder. I'm going to suggest this, even though it's slightly weaker, because it will continue to be useful through high rank. You can upgrade your Thunder Axe 1 into a Thunder Axe 2 by using 2 Monster Bone Plus, 2 Toby Kadachi Electrode, 2 Toby Kadachi Membrane, and 3 Coral Crystal. This is your last upgrade for low rank. Use whichever weapon you made to take out Odegaron, Rathalos, and Diablos. After beating the Zora Magdaro set piece and killing a deceptively strong Pookie Pookie, you'll gain access to high rank quests. Congratulations, the baby gloves are coming off.
Our immediate goal in high rank is a weapon upgrade to compensate for the increased health of monsters with a long-term goal of bringing our sharpness to the next level. You'll immediately want to hunt a Toby Kadachi, mine Carbolite Ore, and take out some Vespoids, which are the insect enemies around to get materials required to upgrade your Thunder Axe 2. Upgrade your Thunder Axe 2 into a Lightning Chopper 1 by using 5 Carbolite Ore, 4 Toby Kadachi Scale Plus, 3 Toby Kadachi Pelt Plus, and 3 Vespoid Inner Wing. You actually can build a Lightning Chopper 1 outright by using 4 Thunder Sack, 7 Carboid Ore, 3 Toby Kadachi Scale Plus, and 1 Light Crystal. This may be more convenient for you if you're having trouble getting the Vespoid Inner Wings. Now use the Lightning Chopper 1 to progress through the main story until you take out Pink Rathian and gain access to the Elder's Recess. Now you have another choice to make. You can mine in the Elder's Recess for Fusium Ore and upgrade your Lightning Chopper 1 into a Lightning Chopper 2 by using 5 Fusium Ore, 2 Toby Kadachi Electrode Plus, 4 Toby Kadachi Membrane, and 3 Thunder Sack. Or, you can hunt a new monster, Urigan, to build a Motor Chopper 1. Use 1 Urigan Jaw, 6 Urigan Scale Plus, 4 Urigan Carapace, and 1 Urigan Marrow to upgrade your Lightning Chopper 1 into a Motor Chopper 1. These weapons will both be comparable. They both have the extremely desirable power file. The Motor Chopper 1 has 35 more raw damage, a good chunk more blue sharpness with 120 fire damage versus the thunder damage on the Lightning Chopper 2, with plus 30 defense is a nice little bonus. Fire damage is less desirable than Thunder, but it will be alright versus Nergigante and later Valhazak. It is significantly harder to build, as you'll need to hunt at least one Uragan versus simply mining in the Elder's Recess and hunting more Toby Kadachi. It does have a better final upgrade tier, but requires an Uragan Ruby and Teostrum materials. Your next hunt is going to be Nergigante and he's weakest to Thunder Element, but again, the damage will be comparable. Since you can build a Lightning Chopper 1 outright, you can build both of them fairly easily. If after your hunt, you got 3 Elder Dragon Blood, you can upgrade your Lightning Chopper 2 into a Lightning Chopper 3 by using 3 Elder Dragon Blood, 4 Toby Kadachi Electrode Plus, 6 Toby Kadachi Claw Plus, and 1 Wyvern Gem. You can get Wyvern Gems from hunting monsters like Baroth, Juratotus, and Radaban. Of course, Nergigante's Switch Axe is amazing. You can build the Nurgle Gash by going through the Ore Tree. Build a Proto Iron Axe 1 into Proto Iron Axe 2 into Proto Iron Axe 3 into Improved Steel Axe 1 into Improved Steel Axe 2 into Improved Steel Axe 3 into Perfect Alloy Axe 1 and finally the Nurgle Gash. Congratulations, you now have a weapon that's completely capable of getting you through the rest of the game and one of the best switch axes. This will be adequate for taking out the remaining Elder Dragons. After taking out Xenojiva, you can upgrade the Nurgle Gash one more time into Dying Light by using two Xenojiva Horns, five Nurgigante Horn Plus, five Nurgigante Talons, and one Nurgigante Gem. The gem will take a lot of time, unless you're really lucky, but it will be worth the investment. For additional endgame weapons, you can upgrade the Motor Chopper 1 into a Motor Chopper 2 by using 4 Teostra Carapace, 2 Uragan Jaw, 4 Uragan Scoot, and 1 Uragan Ruby. This will be most useful in hunts against Valhazak and Kirin as they are extremely weak to fire. It won't be as useful for everything else because about 12 of the 36 monsters in the game are immune to fire. You can also go through the Diablos path to build the Axe of Demons which has the highest raw damage output available with a power file. And it will be an excellent option once you can offset the negative affinity and gain non-elemental boost through gear or decorations. Thanks for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Guides for the rest of the weapons are on the way.